Still things that go wrong. to worship this morning. It's nice to see you all. Um, our theme this morning is love like Jesus. I wonder if we could. What do you think? How are we good at, are we good at loving others and caring for them? Um, we should have a church talk. Oh, are they there? We've heard the Bible. Are you expecting to read? Oh, there we are. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's good. <laughs> so, it's our Holy Communion service this morning, and um, we're going to join together in saying our Whitford Parish Mission Statement Prayer, which might appear hopefully in a moment. Here we go. Let's say this together. Loving Amen. Heavenly Father, please help us to grow to be more like Jesus. We want to get to know Christ together by loving one another, serving others, and being at the heart of our community. Lord Jesus, please encourage us on our way. Amen. Good. And so, um, just a word from Philippians. <clears throat> Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. We are going to join together in worship. Our music group are going to lead us and we will get to enjoy. Come now is the time to worship.
together in saying sorry for things that have happened over the past. Father, in turn, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Our loving Heavenly Father, who knows each one of us, willingly forgive us. Amen. Anybody got anything they would like to share this morning? Anything that's happened this week? No? I got, we've got a birthday. We've got a birthday coming up soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe something's happening tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Shirley's birthday. Has anybody else got a birthday that we can yeah. celebrate? So we're going to just do a traditional happy birthday because we can all sign that together and we've been practicing it um, in the various churches. So if you haven't already done it, it's happy birthday. That's it really. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that together. We'll say it together. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. socially distance, but uh, it was a lovely, lovely day, and they're launched and happy um, in their married mm -hmm. lives. So thank you for all those who thought about them all that day and, and prayed for them as well. Thank you. I know that there's some various cards going round, um, but there's one in particular that we couldn't give on um, at our annual meeting on Monday because Tammy was on holiday. But Tammy has served us as warden for, I think it's six and a half years because of the lockdown and everything. She's continued faithfully for us until we were able to appoint new wardens this week. So I wanted to give her a card and um, say thank you. So, um, yes, in our sort of upside down way, you know how you have to sign things as you come. Just put it all back together for you. Right. Grateful thanks. Big clap for Tammy. Thank you. We reckon she's been the youngest warden, don't we, in the diocese? We started out, how old were you when you started? 25. 25, so yeah. Very young, and she's done a great job, hasn't she? So, yeah. yeah. Hope you all like our new fence. Do you like our new fence? Yes. yes. I do, yes. Apparently, it's got a few wobbly bits. I didn't, I didn't test it all, but Tammy's checked it all, so we'll have to have a little chat with them this week. But um, basically, the basic thing looks lovely, doesn't it? It's really good. I'm really pleased with it. It's good. So, thank you. Thank you for organising that. We're going to listen to a worship song again from Heaven UK. Help this baby.
who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. <clears throat> John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. We're going to the parable of the two sons. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you to show the, way of right, show the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to use some words from an old hymn to help us as we work our way through these two passages today. Um, and uh, it would be lovely if you can join in me, with me in each verse as we um, get to it. So that will appear on the screen. Um, let's just pray together. So loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words to us this morning from Philippians and from Matthew. Lord, as we think and reflect on your words, help us to shape our lives our lives will reflect your love to one another and to those we meet in the world. Amen. So here's the first bit. Let's say that together. May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day by his love and power controlling all I do and say. Sounds a little bit weird to our ears today, but it's actually quite beautiful. The idea that everything we do and say comes from God. That we would always speak to one another in love. 
and that we would want the best for one another. If we follow that, we would learn to encourage one another, to challenge and respect one another. And so it goes on, always in love. Jesus wants us to live that way, and Paul writes his letter to the Philippians to try to explain to them that if we have received the smallest amount of love and compassion from our Father God, then we should repay that in kind to one another. Coming to church, reading our Bible, sitting at home, walking and contemplating enables us to draw on the deep well of love from our Father God. And then, well, when we're full to bursting or maybe we're just filled up a bit, we've got the capacity to pass that on to others. I can't quite imagine Christ's mind, and certainly having it is certainly a big leap. But as I think about his life, his life was always so giving, so generous, and so wise. And so we pray that each one of us should drink in a little of that depth of love and begin to be changed, to be more like Jesus. I thought I'd give you a couple of jokes to cheer you on your way this morning. So um, here's the first. The refrigerator is a clear example that what's on the inside is what really counts. I thought that was quite clever. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you love Star Wars, I can't even say it properly, sorry. If you love Star Wars, may the force be with you. That's <laughs> 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 just fair, that's fair. Right, so our second verse. Let's say it together. May the word of Christ dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour. So that all may see I triumph only through his power. Well, why do you come to church? Do you come to church to feel good? Do you come to church to be someone? Do you come to church to be noticed? Do you come to church to greet all your friends? Or do we come to worship God? <coughs> Well, it's quite a hard question, isn't it? Because I think it's good to be noticed and to notice one another. But our primary reason for coming is to worship God, isn't it? To be in his presence and his company. To restore our souls, which may include the main moments of peace and quiet in God's company. I know that uh, some of you and lots of people in our parish have a good memory for verses from the Bible. I wondered if you've got a favourite that you'd like to recall. Has anyone got a favourite that they would like to share or say? Or nobody's got a favourite. I've got one. You've got a favourite. Well done. Um, if, if you're in, ever in trouble, uh, with um, in, in life, then call Jeremiah 333, 33 verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you. Very good. Oh, Very good. good. Call to me and I will answer you. Anybody else going to be praying? No, our live stream puts us off. Thanks. Go on, Pam, go. Well, I have a passage from chapter 2 that um, Lynette read. Um, it's about Jesus. Yeah. And it's about the very nature of God. Do not consider equality with God something to be used. <coughs> Thank you, indeed. Good. Yep, God so loved the world. I know lots of you know that one, don't you? That he gave his only son. Um, and I know that people who like to sing, lots of words in our Christian songs and hymns come from the Bible, don't they? And so calling them to mind can support all of us. Um, our grandchildren, as they walked to school, had two songs in their heads this week. One was about a combine harvester, so what do you think they're preparing for at school? 
Oh, best, yeah. <laughs> and the other was a song that we sang yesterday with um, all the children in Messy Church. <coughs> Jesus, you're my superhero, was sung as we marched to school. You're my star, my best friend. Not words necessarily straight out of the Bible, but words that remind us who to trust. And they learnt the words at New Wine last year when we managed to go, whereas this year we weren't able to go. And so as we got nearer to school, Sebastian said, are we going next year? Hold on to God's words and they will help you in your everyday. And let's look at the next verse. Let's say that together. May the peace of Christ my Saviour rule my life in everything that I may be calm to comfort, sick and sorrowing. Somehow, we know just the words to say when we stop and pray. I can be going to a very difficult meeting, which I know is going to be tough. But somehow, if I pray first, it makes such a difference. God prepares the way. And the people I meet are usually pleasant and often surprise me when they then go on to share a time that they have also encountered God and I wasn't expecting it and it would be truly amazing and quite a relief. I remember when I was travelling to London one day, I arrived at the station in Chelmsford and there were lots of girls on the platform buzzing about getting ready to go off to school when we the, went to the um, Ursula line in Brentwood. They were using their phones, as young people do, don't they? They, they all stand there with their phones. And then one shouted, I got a message! So I, I was sort of listening in, wasn't I really? But you couldn't help yourself because you were on the platform with them um, very excited all around us. He loves me, she said. And all the girls huddled round the phone to see. This was before social dis distancing. I thought how wonderful it would be to be able to send random messages from God, reminding people how loved and wanted they are. So often, that's all people need to hear, isn't it? And then they can cope, or recover, or die peacefully in the arms of our Father God. Taking the things we do to the Lord in prayer means that God gets a chance to talk to us, to allow his spirit to guide us in our thinking and in our doing. And so we come to the next verse. We say together, May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea, him exalting, self-abasing. This is victory. Well, another bit of strange old language, self-abasing. We don't hear that much these days. <clears throat> you know, the most amazing actors and actresses often seem to have no desire to be in the limelight as themselves. And that's a bit what self-abasing means. Similarly, I can remember the first time they interviewed Andy Murray. Do you remember? He was incredibly shy. He didn't really want to talk to the camera. He wanted to do what he does best. That's play tennis. He wasn't really interested. So let the love of Jesus fill you this morning from your toes to the top of your head. Fill you with his love so that you have the energy and generosity to share that love with others. Not wanting to share your love, but wanting to share the love of God. The reason we've decorated St Mary's, the reason we've put up fences, is to ma maintain our churches to God's glory. Not to our glory, but to God's glory. We are incredibly grateful to the hands that skillfully did the work, but we want people to know that we are looking after God's house, a place where love should overflow and peace should reign. Look at our next verse. We say together, 
May I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as I onward go. Paul in Philippians reminds us of the wonderful way that Jesus lived out his life, a life of self-giving for each one of us. He faced the enemy but kept his cool and his resolve. He suffered for each one of us, going meekly to the cross. If we start every day looking to Jesus, we will learn to walk more closely with him and learn his ways. We will learn how to cope with people who irritate and annoy us and find ways to bring that love to the fore of our nature so that we can find ways to love the unlovable. It's not easy, but it is God's way. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan a story which reminds us to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. It helps to know that whatever we have done, whatever mess we get into, God loves us. And that helps us to face people who we might struggle to love. <clears throat> In our next verse. Let's say that together. May his beauty rest upon me as I seek the lost to win. And may they forget the channel, seeing only him. And so we come to that story in Matthew. A father asked his son to come and help him in the vineyard. The first son said no, but later he changed his mind and went. The second son said yes but later changed his mind and didn't come to help. So Jesus asked the listeners which son did as the father wanted. They decided it was the first son. You know, the first son was quite rude to his father, but then he redeemed himself by later doing what he was asked. The second son behaviour was worse. Because he said yes, he would help, but then totally embarrassed his father by not turning up at all. Jesus likens the first son with tax collectors and prostitutes. They ignored God in their daily life. But when they heard the message from John the Baptist, they repented and wanted to be baptised. Jesus likens the second son to the temple officials and the leaders who did not respond to John or to Jesus. That's quite sad. We have a huge missional task to get to know Jesus by prayer, by reading, by looking at the amazing world that God created and by stopping and thinking or reflecting then we will be ready to tell others about the love of God. And maybe they will begin to see that there is something different about being a Christian which is worthy of note, and they might ask to learn more. Thank you for coming today. It's our opportunity to come together, to show our love of God in worship together and our fellowship as a community with one another. And as we leave this place refilled and refreshed, with God's love refilling every part of us, may we be a witness to the love of God to someone that we meet during this week. Amen. We had a pretty good verse on the comments on the live stream from you, where you asked earlier, um, and it's actually nothing can separate us from the love of God. Thank you. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good verse. <laughs> Definitely one to remember. Thank you very much.
we're going to say our creed together. So um, if you'd like to stand, and it will come up on the screen. We declare our faith together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated, and our music group are going to lead us in a musical song, My Lord, What Love Is This? Thank you. 
the more we know. I think those that know me, well certainly the ones that know me quite well, um, I would hope that I am a fairly happy person, <coughs> fairly half glass full, although my wife might just be that sometimes, but I generally try and be upbeat and I like to look forward. I think most people like to look forward to a holiday, a trip, whatever. Things are a bit different at the moment. Looking forward can be difficult. Okay. As I look around now, um, I think I can safely say that summer has gone. Okay, so um, perhaps trips to the beach are gone, not, not just now. This Thursday, we're into October. So October is definitely, I think, autumn. We can say, yeah, summer's gone, autumn, winter is here. So come, what can we look forward to? Well, autumn is a season of, um, well, glorious colours. The leaves, the rose hips, the berries on the bushes. It's a wonderful, beautiful season. But it's also a season of um, coughs and sneezes. The phrase coughs and sneezes spread diseases actually originates, well, to public health films in 1945, but even before that, to an American film that was produced in 1918 for a flu epidemic in the States. It's certainly very relevant today. Thinking about that, we can all foresee uh, a huge strain on the NHS and key workers for the second time this year will be coming soon. So I'd just like to take a moment for us all to think about um, three groups of people, and perhaps if you can mention them in your prayers as we go through this week. So first of all, can we pray for our elected government and their advisors, who must try and balance people's vulnerability against difficult physical, economic and psychological needs whilst also <coughs> reacting to the changing level of perceived threat from the virus. So if we could take a moment to pray. The second group I identified would be the scientists, research workers and pharmaceutical companies around the world who are all striving to find an effective and safe vaccine in what will be a record time span. So if you could remember those in our prayers now. And the last group I'd like to think about is obviously our key workers, especially the NHS staff, who really will be on the front line again. So a moment's prayer for them, please. So after what I've just been mentioning, you might ask, well, what is there to look forward to? And with less and less daylight hours, the tunnel might seem a little darker, perhaps a little longer. But I know, and I'm sure you will all join me in knowing, that travelling forward with God is far better than travelling alone. He is always by our side. And before I finish, can we also pray for our parish and the city of Chelmsford especially anyone who has lost a relative, friend or loved one, anyone in poor health and those who are shielded, and finally, anyone who may be suffering financially or emotionally. Just take a moment to pray for those, please.
And so to repeat my theme of looking forward, I think you all know as dawn follows the dark night, the fresh new spring follows the long winter, the weather forecast always follows the news. Um, there will be an end to this COVID-19 tunnel. So I'm looking forward to shaking someone by the hand, maybe giving them a, hell, a hug. Remember hugs? I quite enjoyed some of them. I'm not saying them with, but some were better than others. Um, I pray for a time when we can visit someone in hospital, go to a wedding and not worry about the numbers, likewise a funeral. I might also look forward to watching Chelsea City football team play. I might be alone in that one. However, to say, to end, Lord, keep, protect and be with us on our journey by your grace towards a brighter tomorrow. Thank you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. Sorry, I didn't turn my mic off. On. Should do that now. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. 
drink is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so we join together in saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Um, and so if Barbara will invite you to come forward, that would just be um, coming forward to the front, and it's just the bread still at the moment. I'll just change my mask, so I'm not allowed to just walk over the elements and you. <laughs> Oh. 
for joining us in worship this morning. Thank you to our music group. Um, um, may God bless you through your week. Um, you'll be hearing from us. That we're hoping that various things might begin to creep open. We had a messy church yesterday, which was a great fun. Um, Jess did a uh, Highlands Park last week, which was lovely. Um, and there's Paul mentioned about shoe boxes as well. But don't forget there's harvest coming up, harvest next week at um, St Mary's, and then the week after here, and we'll be collecting for the food bank and the chess as usual. Okay, thank you, God bless. Have a good week. Thank you.